Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service. Glad you've joined us. This is the only show in the metro area that talks about the growth and development of your favorite city. Big thank you to Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics. They are the title sponsors of the program and make uh, the next hour of fun and enjoyment possible for you. Now, without any further ado, it is time to bring on my co-host, a legendary real estate deal maker and all around good guy, Trenton Bradley Magid. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jeffrey Stephen Bills. Well, thank you. And Trenton, I learned a little something about you last night I want to share with KFAB Nation. Excellent. All right. So my wife, Stephanie, and I went out to a delicious dinner at Kanara. Kanara is the uh, outstanding outstanding Indian restaurant in Regency Court. Nice owners. Yeah, Ashish and uh, I can't remember his wife's name, but at any rate, uh, we were we were having dinner. Love Kanara. I've only been there a couple few times, but uh, every time has been awesome. And then all of a sudden, the owner shows up at our table and he thanks us for being there. And he looks at me and he says, "Hey, are are you the Grow Omaha guy?" I said, "Yeah, that's me." And he said. Your partner's here all the time. We love him. So apparently, ladies and gentlemen, our friend Trenton likes to eat Indian food at Kanara. I do like the restaurant. I've only been there a handful of times, but he's this a very week. nice guy, and I seem to make an impression. Yes, you do make an impression. Anyway, that was a good place, and since we don't have a Girl Omaha Eats restaurant review this week, that's the that's the closest you're going to get, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but we want to bring on um, a voice and a name that you know. It is Brad Williams from ENA Consulting and the proprietor of Brad Williams Photography. And uh, we like to call him our frequent radio contributor. Brad, uh, good morning. Welcome back. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. And he's also the host of the Beers with Brad uh, podcast, right? Yeah, I just had a new one this week where I went over my 22 favorite cultural series photos. I saw that. I saw that one. While and, you're drinking uh, beer, right? Yeah. Well, a beer. It's, uh, but each time features yeah, a beer. Feature, yeah. feature, a lot of times I do local. I pick a local brewery and pick a local beer and then talk about photography while I have a beer. And and this uh, this one got a little long. You know, I was going to do my top 10 photos and then next thing you know, I had 22 in my folder and <laughs> So you drank a tall boy is what you're saying? Yeah, it was it was tall. <laughs> it was pretty tall. When people ask me what my favorite drink is, I usually say the seventh one. <laughs> and with that, um, we want to uh, we want to make an official announcement. So Trenton and I have been kind of talking a little bit about this the last few weeks. We've been kind of teasing it, if you will. We've said a few things on social media, and and a lot of you have figured this out. But we want to say it for uh, for official purposes. Grow Omaha now offers daily news on the growomaha.com website. And so we encourage all of you to, to check it every day, uh, especially every business day. We'll drop a little bit on there on the weekends, but uh, every business day we have new news on the site. So you go to growomaha.com and boom, it's right there on the front page. Um, you're going to see when you first go to the page, there are news briefs, uh, which are just quick little one paragraph news stories. We uh, post a couple of those a day. And then to the right of that, at least if you're on the um, computer screen, we have the featured project of the day. We have a construction project that we have on there each business day. And then below that, we've got stories that go into a little more uh, depth when it comes to Omaha growth and development and business stories. Uh, we also have an ongoing list of uh, of new restaurants and retailers. We have uh, transportation articles written by Eric Miller. We're partnering with the Greater Omaha Chamber and Visit Omaha, which is the Convention and Visitors Bureau here in town. Uh, so we're providing you with a lot of content. And we are even working on um, a series of very useful lists. We're going to have restaurant lists and, and retail lists that are coming soon. Those will be on there eventually. But already, lots of news. So we would encourage you to make it a daily habit. Go to growomaha.com every morning. You're like Maybe you're a Wall Street Journal guy, or maybe you're a New York Times gal, or maybe you check like your favorite sports team, or omaha.com, or one of the TV or radio stations. While you're doing that, add it to your list, growomaha.com. New news every business day. What's the catch, Jeff? There is no catch because it doesn't cost you a thing. It's the same price as the weekly market report. Or like they say uh, like they say on some of those TV commercials, there's no risk. Absolutely. Your money back. Your money back. If you don't like it, it's your money back. But 
It's F R E free. And and this is something that that you created and then I inspired afterwards. And if that, if that makes sense. And it's really expanded into retroactive um, retroactive inspiration. The source for Omaha business news, economic development news, transportation development planning board and w- what's nice about it is we're we're saving forests because so many people look at this. Could you imagine the amount of copies that people get? Over twenty thousand people oh, if we printed get this. It? Yeah, yeah. Every Thursday afternoon, all you do is go to growmaha.com, go to the weekly market report, sign up for that, and while you're there, you're going to see our news feed, and it is brief and informative, and uh, you're going to be in the know. Okay, yeah, and so just to clarify something Trenton said there, he he talked about the the market report, the newsletter that twenty one thousand of you subscribe to. That stays, that keeps coming out every Thursday afternoon. Is not affected by this. This is an additional uh, news service that is available to you on GrowOmaha.com. And thank you to all of our sponsors on all forms of Grow Omaha Media that make this possible. And with that, speaking of sponsors, we want to uh, go into our Eagle Mortgage News of the Week, which is brought to you by, well, it's Eagle Mortgage because it's called the Eagle Mortgage News of the Week. You can find them in person at their office, 114th and Davenport, or online, eaglemortgagecompany.com. It doesn't matter what kind of loan you're looking for. The main thing is, if you want to get a new or your own piece of the American dream, you probably need a loan. And uh, they will do that for you. Sit down with them before you start the home buying process. Uh, talk about your options. Get a pre-approval letter from Eagle Mortgage and then go out and um, and start searching. If you already have a house in mind, that's fine. It's not too late. Just uh, give Eagle Mortgage a call right away on Monday and they'll get you started. They'll help you fly through the process. EagleMortgageCompany.com. Okay, a couple news items, Trenton and Brad. Uh, the first one is uh, the final City of Omaha program created with federal pandemic recovery funds is going before the City Council next week. The city is setting aside $2 million in ARPA money, uh, American Rescue Plan Act, that will go towards safety, security, and improvements of qualifying business improvement districts. Now, these bids are places where in town where property owners have come together making contributions to kind of improve uh, the place, improve the city, improve the, the area. We have seven bids that applied for and qualified to receive these funds. Benson, Blackstone, Downtown, Dundee, North 24th Street, North Saddle Creek, and South Omaha. A couple quick highlights. Um, what are these BIDs, Business Improvement Districts, going to do with their share of the $2 million? Benson going to install some uh, pedestrian safety features, Blackstone, um, bollards and lighting in an alley. Uh, Downtown, they're going to improve lighting in the old market. Dundee, concrete sidewalk repairs. I'm a big fan of concrete repairs right now. That's That's a very important issue in our town. North 24th Street, install permanent pedestrian lighting on 24th Street between Pinckney and Ohio Streets. Saddle Creek is that new business improvement district. Uh, they're going to work on pedestrian lighting, and then South Omaha also lighting, pedestrian lighting, permanent lighting inside the area. So not the sexiest development news, but important, and it makes our city safer and better and happier. And the other thing I want to mention, which is uh, also related to some uh, organizations getting money, um, we have three development projects, uh, tractions, if you will, that are under development in the Omaha metro area that are receiving additional funding through the state of Nebraska's Shovel Ready program. Uh, This is also money that was from the uh, ARPA Act and um, looks like we've got about uh, $2 million each going to Omaha Performing Arts to help them finish the downtown Tanaska Center for Arts Engagement, which is under construction, $108 million project on the east side of Holland Performing Arts Center. Joslin Art Museum uh, in September is opening its $100 million, 42,000 square foot edition, which will have contemporary art. That's getting really close. They're getting some of this money. And then the uh, other recipient is Elkhorn Athletic Association. They recently opened the Interstate Bank Sportsplex in Valley. It's on the north side of Highway 275. Big youth sports complex. They're going to make it even bigger. Already it's a 120-acre complex. They're going to add some more uh, ball diamonds and fields and this sort of thing. So good uses that will continue to improve 
And a lot of these things bring in out-of-town money. Yeah. And I like it because everything you just mentioned are public venues, public spaces, not private companies that are getting incentives or getting tax and credit financing and things like that. And then, uh, Brad, I want to get your uh, take on this. The City of Omaha and developers uh, this week celebrated the groundbreaking of Phase 1 for the Southside Terrace Redevelopment Project. That's a uh, public housing project located generally by 28th and W Streets in South Omaha. $35 million first phase consists of a four-story, 92-unit apartment building, which will replace two smaller uh, multifamily units in that area. A lot of these units will be reserved for previous tenants of Southside Terrace, but there will be a new additional ones coming as well. Uh, but here's the, the cool thing. Another six phases uh, in addition to this first phase in progress that will add hundreds of mixed use income apartments, more retail, commercial, community space. Brad, that'll change the South Side. Yeah, I mean, this has been a long time coming. We've been talking about it for years now. And uh, I can only picture it's going to be eventually like the Highlander up on the uh, the north side of downtown, which was a very similar uh, public housing complex back in the what, the late 90s when, when it closed up. So great things for South Omaha. I think it's going to do wonders for that neighborhood. A lot of progress on the, in, in East Omaha, which is uh, desperately needed. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up our news of the week by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com, if you want to get a hold of them. And we have an announcement to make. It's the call-in show. We do this a few times a year, four to six times a year, in which we allow people to call in. If so, you have a question on your mind about anything related to Omaha growth and development, we'll take a stab at it. The number is 402-558-1110. 402-558-1110. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. Perhaps you're driving by some project and it's under construction and you're thinking, what is that? We'll call the Grow Omaha guys. We'll take our best. Uh, we'll take our best attempt at it. And don't wait till the end of the show. We always get all jammed up at the end with questions. We uh, yeah, we have jam plenty us up. Of- up front. Up front, yeah. Jam us now. All right, 402-558-1110. The phones are open. Uh, we're waiting for you to call, and we'll, um, we'll be curious to hear what is on your mind. You're listening to Jeff Beals, Trenton Maggot, and Brad Williams on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show, Jeff Beals, Trenton Maggot, and Brad Williams at your service. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer athletics you just heard the voice from cheer athletics uh, just a moment ago but uh, we cannot uh, say enough about the quality work that cheer athletics does for the youth of omaha and really the youth of america because they they have other locations and other major markets the omaha location is right at the uh, just southwest of highways 50 and 370 in papillion and a great chance for your kids to compete Um, And and in many cases, at the very, very highest levels, Cheer Athletics is the Cadillac brand in the all-star cheer world, which is um, becoming every year a bigger and bigger sport for kids to participate in. You can find out more at caomaha.com. It is the quarterly call-in show. We've got three people in the docket right now. If you want to join them, the number is 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. And first up is Mike with a question about... uh, something going on on West Maple Road. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Um, I understand that Fleet and Farm is supposed to be putting in their first Omaha location out near the new Costco, and I wondered when, if you knew, that that was going to actually start taking shape. Yeah, uh, you know, this is a very popular question. We get asked about it all the time. They bought that ground several years ago now. Uh, I just looked it up because we got that uh, question just two days ago, probably. They still own the ground, but they're, they don't have any building permits yet. So uh, I, I still believe it's coming. I've not heard anything different, but there's nothing, there's not be any action anytime soon without a building permit. And interestingly, they also own a site uh, northwest of 192nd and Highway 370. And uh, there's a local developer that is in charge of those and i don't know why they're waiting so the other question is which one are they going to build first or are they going to build them at the same time well and the one that is uh, planned for the west maple corridor last we checked uh, machine shed which is a themed restaurant out of uh, the quad cities area 
of Iowa, um, supposedly is planning because they control a spot there. It'll be interesting to see if Machine Sheds ends up building. All right. Well, Mike, we appreciate the call. And uh, let's go to Greg. Greg, you have a question about um, uh, something around Warner Park. Good morning, Greg. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I was kind of curious development-wise on uh, what's the current status on Pennant Place. It seems like they kind of did a lot of work to get ready, like in the last couple of years, and then it's just sitting there. I drive by it every day on the way to work. And then I had one quick comment to make. Um, I know you guys talk about it in pre patients but the uh um the crossroads development that i was looking on e omaha forums we've been talking about that since 2011 so i think some frustration possibly skepticism is still warranted to a certain extent anyway love everything you guys do and the construction updates from brad all right thank you greg uh, trenton why don't you uh, tear it into the pennant place okay first of all and it's funny you, you call it pennant place still and that goes back a long time. I originally had that ground listed back in the day, and uh, Jerry Torzon of BHI uh, owns that property now, um, right in front of the ballpark along Highway 370, and I believe it's now called Generations, and I've seen a couple iterations and site plans and things like that, but uh, they definitely are, are, are developing that. Um, there's going to be some office to the east and there's where the apartments are. And it'll take a little while, but um, it, it's still moving forward. A lot of the streets are in already, which which is nice. Uh, Brad, do you have anything to add to that one? No, I was out at uh, Omaha Storm Chasers game on Thursday, and I did notice all the roads were in and open, and some people were even parking on them already. So Great. And then um, the second, the uh, crossroads, yeah, it's been a long time since um, Frank Krejci bought that uh, at a good price, and it's probably been 15 years or so. But... Um, I was talking to uh, Chip James with Lockwood this morning, actually, and pretty much um, all the horizontal infrastructure done, the sewers and the roads and the utilities and things like that. There is a uh, deal with Woodbury, uh, a group that I think they're worth about $4 billion out of Salt Lake City, a, a pr very prominent multi-generational family. They've gone to the city and gotten approvals, and they've changed a few things. The city will own uh, three subterranean uh, parking lots and just like they're doing with the Park Omaha around the city and all that kind of stuff. And I think we'll see more stuff coming up next year. I, I know it's a lot of consternation on people's parts about w why is it taking so long or whatever. It's a complicated project. At least they're doing it right. It sat there for a long, long time, but all indications are um, it'll start going vertical next year. And the, the Woodbury addition is fairly recent. It was just earlier this year when that was announced that they joined the team, right? Yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. It, it, it'll be a phased project, but um, you you can count on... Uh, ho I think that they're going to have like apartments and condos. They'll have retail, office. Um, and so it'll be mixed use and it'll, it'll be vertical, which will be nice and really complement uh, the new library. So I understand why people uh, have been frustrated with Crossroads because we have been talking about it so long, like Greg said. And I'm not saying um, that Greg was implying this, but a lot of times when we um, hear questions from Gromaha listeners or subscribers, it almost sounds like there's people think there's some sort of nefarious lie or something that's being hidden. And I just kind of want to remind people that we've been talking about it for a long time, but there have been multiple players involved, uh, different people uh, and, uh, that were involved at different times and it didn't work. And then we have to remember that the original person behind all of this passed away um, a couple years ago. And then now we have an entire new development company coming in. And we're talking about a project that is somewhere between when it's all said and done, $500 million and a billion dollars. Sometimes this stuff just takes a while and weird things can happen. But I don't see any reason to believe that Crossroads won't eventually end up a very special place. I've never in all the 20 years I've been working in, in the development world seen someone passing away speed up a project. It's always put it. I mean, there's a couple others here in town where it's put it two, three, four years behind. So yeah. it, it doesn't help at all. Definitely a shock to a system. Well, Greg, we appreciate that call. And then uh, we do see that Bonnie is on the line as our next caller. Bonnie, we would request that you stay with us uh, through our news break. 
I know it's asking a lot. You've been on for a while, but Bonnie wants to talk a little bit about Gretna's future. You'll be our first one when we come back. But after Bonnie, the phones are open. Um, so if you want to get a call in, it's 402-558-1110, 402-558-1110. We're going to break for the news. Uh, but you are listening to Jeff Beals, Trenton Magid. We're joined with uh, uh, our good friend and contributor, Brad Williams. And uh, we're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beals, Trenton Magid, and Brad Williams at your service. We're brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center. Dingman's has four metro area locations. And um, doesn't matter which one you go to, uh, they'll take very good care of you. Dingman's is uh, it's been owned and operated locally since 1996 and has been chosen as best of Omaha in the auto body repair category every year since 2005. Also do uh, paint and mechanical work as well. Dingman's Collision Center. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your... Noddle Company's Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week. And uh, Noddle Companies has multiple developments around town and around the country. But here in Omaha, they have Exarban Village, uh, Village Point West Medical Campus, Steel Ridge in the Papillion Gretna area, Rivers Edge Accounts Bluffs, many, many others. Well, one of them is the Builders District. And a lot, the Builders District is awesome. This is that area just west of Charles Schwab Field. Uh, but we've got some news inside the Builders District this week. Ellie's Chinchoro Caribbean Bistro. Um, it's a family-owned Caribbean restaurant that closed in February. They had been on South 32nd Avenue by the old uh, Los Sola Mio, which is now called the Mio. And it, it didn't quite work there, but they've moved to a new location. This one is right on the northwest corner of 16th and Cumming Street. So it's close to uh, the Tip Top Building, Omaha Design Center, uh, the Kiewit headquarters. Ellie's Chinchoro Caribbean Bistro now open. In fact, the grand opening is today. And uh, we encourage you to check that it out. It looks nice. N- nice little, it's a black building, really stands out. And, uh, With a lot of accent yeah, colors. Yeah, part of that builder's district is really cool. The pocket park it has the big screen up now. Yeah. Ellie's is a nice, nice addition because it took a rundown property and made it really, really attractive right there on an important corner. All right, that is your Noddle Company's Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight of the Week. You can learn more about Noddle Companies by going to noddlecompanies.com. All right, Bonnie, um, sorry for making you wait, but we're glad you did. Uh, you are next on the Grom Ha Show. Okay, am I on now? Yes, you are. Okay, okay. First of all, kudos to Grow Omaha, one of a kind Omaha show. Thank you. Love you. Thank okay. you. Second, we secondly, love you too. Um, and secondly, uh, to hearing that machine sheds moving in because we take occasional field trips to Des Moines, we love machine shed that much. <laughs> Everybody in Omaha will love machine shed. Guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, okay. great operators. The the Whalen family with Heart uh, Heart of America Group. Uh, they they also own uh, Johnny's Italian Steakhouse in Village Point. Didn't know that. Okay. Okay, so that's good to know. Now, my question, along the Gretna corridor, uh, what do you see in Gretna's future development, such as perhaps big box retail stores, Target, the lumber stores, such as, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, or Menards, and also the future of maybe a handful of sit-down restaurants? Right now, we have a handful of fast food restaurants, but um, something more along the line of a sit-down restaurant. I'm going to throw out a few names, maybe Longhorn, out, out back, that type of a thing. And would there be an Aldi's in the future? Anything along that line, what do you hear might be happening out here? Well, I there's so much going on. It, 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 that stuff's going to happen. There's no way around it. Um, you know, with that, all the land around Fleet Farm that's getting developed right now, um, and then all this deve- hospital project, yeah, and all this stuff so far has been happening on the north side of 370. So you basically have the entire south side of 370 that has yet to be developed. Uh, I don't know any specifics. I know that there were Menards did own land around by the Walmart area on on 370, a little bit further south. I cannot can't believe there's not a Home Depot or Lowe's out in that vicinity yet. It's, I'm sure that's only a matter of time. Well, uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, and, and we have regular conversations with Mike Evans, and by the way. Uh, you have a fabulous mayor. 
uh, in Mike Evans. He's the only one running, so it's great that he is great. And um, he's very progressive. And he, he, he does something that he, he should do. He does his job and that he protects Gretna from many people that uh, want projects that don't make sense. And so you've heard a lot about the uh, Good Life District, and uh, hopefully that comes to fruition um, all around Nebraska Crossing. Um, you're going to have industrial properties uh, over there by um, Lovely Skins Warehouse. Uh, you'll have sports-related things. It'll take a while, but you're going to – I think you made a good point that, that uh, there needs to be more upscale restaurants uh, to, to complement the, the fast feeders. Jeff? Well, uh, I would just say I agree with these guys. Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, someday Gretna will have tens of thousands of people and uh, and every retailer you can possibly imagine. And that day is not all that far away. I also see the downtown Gretna has some real potential, too, of kind of grown and expanded a little bit, being more of a Blackstone or a Dundee type area. Yeah, and none of that even um, uh, takes into consideration all of the uh, significant growth that we expect to happen um, in and around the Nebraska crossing area by Interstate 80. Well, Bonnie, we appreciate the call. Appreciate you waiting as long as you did. And um, Chuck, uh, you are the next uh, caller on Gromaw. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, guys. Hey, I just got a, a question. I want to drive all around. Uh, whether it be Omaha Council Bluffs or Gretna, and you see new construction sites starting up. Um, but a lot of times you don't see signs of uh, coming soon uh, Longhorn or home of whatever. Is there a reason why that doesn't happen all the time? Well, a lot of times the infrastructure goes in um, ahead of all that. And you know, when those sites actually get sold and the deal's finalized, then you will see a, a coming soon sign. But a lot of times that's, you know, two, maybe 18 months at a quick pace after the, the construction started. The other thing is some of these uh, businesses that are going in the buildings under construction want to keep their powder dry for a while. A lot of times they're uh, trying to wait for a big announcement and they, they don't want it all over the place. Then, of course, we at Gromaha come around, find it out and wreck it. But um, <laughs> a lot of a lot of them want to wait for 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 grand uh, announcements and they kind of keep some of that quiet. And then I think sometimes people just don't even think of it. They just, they're focused on getting the building up, and they just don't even think about that marketing aspect. And a lot of times on retail, especially, it's it's really hard to pinpoint an opening date. And they, they don't want to over-promise and under-deliver. So they don't promote it until they, they know that they have a hard date. And so every, everybody's a little bit different. And, we, and we've been told to withhold some information sometimes and Usually we do if we like those people. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, Chuck, we re really appreciate that call. We're going to squeeze in one more call in the next two minutes. And uh, that means the last caller on Grow Omaha today is Jan with a question about Miracle Hills. Good morning, Jan. Good morning. We were wondering, um, they have redone this shopping area and it's so pretty, but we have no idea if there's any um, retail or what's going in now. Well, Jan, glad you asked. And uh, I have to tell you, you just scooped the Perkins Kreitzer construction lightning round. But since you brought it up, um, I will uh, I will mention what we're talking about. Um, Perkins Kreitzer Construction is the firm that is has been building that brand new um, uh, property or that brand newly renovated property there at Miracle Hills. I've been building it for uh, Perkins Properties. But at any rate, um, we had the University of Nebraska Medical Center project going into that area that's already open. But the big news is... Wait, let's, let's wait till after the break. Well, I'm going to answer a question. <laughs> well, she'll, she'll stay around. We got, we got other stuff. We got, we got. There's always plenty on the we list. We got a big long right. list of stuff for the lightning round. Man. So I mean, I told you, I told her she already scooped it, so I got to give her the answer. Um, okay, Funny Bone Comedy Club is uh, moving Funny from Bone Village Comedy. Point Shopping Center, Funny and Bone they're going to uh, go into a sixteen thousand square foot space in. Uh, the west side of 114th Street, Miracle Hills. They're going to be joined by a newish concept called Draftcade. 
as draft as in beer, Cade as in arcade, draft Cade. They have locations already in Kansas City, Richmond, Virginia, and Toledo, Ohio. And uh, they will kind of co-locate with, with Funny Bone. They won't open until uh, into 25, so I believe June of 2025. And so it, we'll have to wait a little bit uh, till they build it out. If you can remember what uh, used to be in that Miracle Hill Center, they're going to take a former space that Who Hot restaurant was in, uh, plus I think some, some other space. Now, um, they are working on making some announcements soon about something that will go into the former Boston Market space. And they're also working with a couple other tenants that I'm told we're going to be excited about. But Funny Bone Comedy Club is, is uh, the first one. All right. Oh, so, well, that's good. Jan, we're glad you asked and uh, appreciate you listening. And we appreciate everyone who called in today. We are going to take our final break of the hour. And when we come back, uh, we are going to have lots of things on the Perkins Kreitzer construction lightning round. So don't worry that we already divulged Funny Bone. Uh, there's more excitement yet to come. You are listening to... Jeff Beals, Trenton Maggot, and Brad Williams on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. It is time for your Perkins Kreitzer Construction Lightning Round, in which we talk about a lot of things in a little bit of time. And we want to thank Perkins Kreitzer for making this possible. That is a full service Class A general contractor. We just told you they are going to be the ones building out the new Funny Bone and Draft Cade space in Miracle Hill. Shoot, they built out the entire uh, Miracle Hills uh, renovation project. But they do so much more. A lot of times we talk about some of the restaurants they've built here because if you haven't noticed, Trent and I have a little bit of a food addiction. I think Brad's kind of got a little bit of the oh, same yeah. problem. Uh, we know Chris Corey, um, who uh, does our uh, restaurant reviews, he's got a serious food addiction. So we appreciate all of the uh, restaurants that Perkins Kreitzer Construction has built. We all fed our food addiction on the way here this morning. Saddle Creek Breakfast Club. Yeah, yeah they're packing them in this morning. Yeah. Uh, 7.30 in the morning, there was a wait out out the door. And there you had Jeff Beals, Trent Maggot, Brad Williams, and Chris Corey, the four of us, sitting on bar seats because we couldn't get a table. And it was totally worth it. Yes. Um, man, that food is amazing. And they're not even paying us to say this. All right. Uh, into the Perkins Kreitzer construction lightning round. Let's get into it. Uh, big uh, big news that uh, we announced this week. We, we, I, we just put it up on the, our new website as a construction project, and uh, everyone got really excited about it. But construction is underway for Coneflower Creamery's future West Omaha location in downtown Elkhorn, right on Main Street, uh, across the street from Boyd and Charlie's. Uh, opening expected sometime in 2025. They're still putting up the walls. Uh, but this was, if you're familiar with downtown Elkhorn, there was a little cavity uh, in the downtown where there was no building. And basically, this is a dental filling for the cavity. And uh, everyone loves cone flour creamery. You know, another concept that everyone loves in town? Izzy's Pizza. Izzy started out as a, uh, a food truck, actually a food bus, and um, wildly popular. They moved to Omaha from Las Vegas for personal family reasons and brought the food bus with them. And then they opened up uh, earlier this year um, a first bricks and mortar location on 24th Street downtown. They're going to put a second one inside Prehistoric Putt. Prehistoric Putt, one of those uh, themed indoor uh, miniature golf places. It's going into the former Nobby's store in uh, Bel Air Plaza. And for you really old-time Omahans, the former Food City grocery Absolutely. store, if you're old enough to remember that. I had to move there when I was a kid. Um, you did? Because it's a city? Food City, yeah. Oh, okay. Um Anyway, uh, so Izzy's is going to go in with Prehistoric Putt. Now, the cool thing about Prehistoric Putt, that's the same owner who has Fat Putter downtown and is putting in Capital Arcade also at uh, 10th and Dodge in that area. Yeah, good guy. And he's in other cities as well, doing a couple in Des Moines. I think he's got one in Lincoln. Is there one in Kansas City, too, I think? That I don't know, but it's a great concept. And I know Fat Putter downtown has been a home run, uh, not to mix my sports metaphors. Brad, uh, David Uterbach, uh, owner of uh, Yoshitomo and Koji, is taking over Sakura Bana at 74th and Dodge. That's a big deal in the Omaha restaurant world. Yeah, that's. Uh, I was I was excited to see that. You know, you, the, the old-time restaurants around here, a lot of times they seem to fade away, and it's great to see some – New young energy uh, helping the owner out so he can retire, and that goes back to Sushi Ichiban. But I mean, Sushi Ichiban, um, Freudian in, slip in the uh, old uh, IHOP on the yeah. corner of 84th and 
big what, tall triangle roof. road. Yeah. yeah. And, like and this this uh, sushi tastes like pancakes. <laughs> and keeping with the uh, sushi theme, Ajisai Sushi, a new Japanese restaurant that offers all-you-can-eat sushi, has signage up in the former Best Bison restaurant space near 78th and Dodge. An official opening date has not yet been announced. And whoever thought of this is genius. Pax Popcorn and Cocktails has officially opened in the old market, 1118 Howard Street, in the place of the previous tenant, which was the Table Coffee Company, before Table Coffee Company moved a few doors to the west into the old Stokes Bay on the corner. So this, that's kind of confusing. So Table Coffee, Stokes went out of business the old market. Table Coffee Company moved to Stokes. Now Pax Popcorn and Cocktails. They serve gourmet popcorn with premium cocktails. I'm in. Is Table Coffee still there? Yeah, I just said they moved to, uh, really, that was the confusing thing. Oh. They moved to the uh, former Stokes You wanted me to listen? Okay. Keep up on the old market musical chairs. Who's on first? All right, Nordstrom Rack, grand opening date. We have it, October 24th in Village Point. I'm thinking people might line up just like they did for the Costco yesterday at 180th. Yes. Dunkin' Donuts going into an end cap space uh, at a strip center northeast corner of 156th and Ida. And for all you Tesla drivers, Tesla is relocating its Council Bluffs leasing and service center later this month. It's currently located near the Mall of the Bluffs. The new location will be uh, just northwest of the Mid-America Center. It's a beautiful facility. Yeah, right there by Interstate 29 and I-80. Wonton Joe's uh, closing its food truck. A bit of a surprise. That was very popular. Uh, Little Caesars, a uh, new location going in close to Indian Creek Golf Club in uh, Northwest Omaha Elkhorn area. And uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. We got through the ent- We never get through the entire list. Anyway, the- first. I'm waiting for the Jocelyn to open. The music, uh, September 10th. Uh, the music is playing, which means that we're done. Brad Williams, always good to have you with us. Hey, it's always great being here. That's Brad Williams of Brad Williams Photography and E&A Consulting. In the meantime, I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center, Chair Athletics, and Perkins Kreitzer Construction. We'll chat with you next week right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.